um, if you're putting content on the internet, uh, you better understand things like search engine optimization. Um, mm -hmm. uh, ju just like if you are a real estate investor, you better understand wholesaling or short sales or whatever your lane is. Right. So my lane in the physical products world has to have an arm of uh, amazon.com. Otherwise I'm going to be playing from behind. All right, so hello on today's episode of Thought Leader Thursday. I'm joined by an accomplished and serial entrepreneur, author, and investor. His main focus is on creating lifestyle freedom, helping people create lasting businesses and investing the profits wisely. That's important. While enjoying a higher quality of life and working less. He is driven by the belief that entrepreneurs solve problems and that the world needs more empowered entrepreneurs. As the founder of capitalism.com, his mission is to empower the next generation of entrepreneurs to create jobs, pay taxes, contribute to the economy, and uplift their families and local communities to create a better world. So please help me welcome to the show, Mr. Ryan Daniel Moran. Ryan, welcome to Epic Real Estate Investing. Matt, I appreciate having me on. I'm going to have to kick whoever made that intro and put pay taxes in there. I, I'm, I, think, I think AOC got a hold of my biography and threw in pay taxes. This is, this is not okay. I'm immediately embarrassed. Really? That's, so that's a, mist, that's a typo, huh? I, I, think, I think what was supposed to be in there was pay fewer taxes. And ah. uh, the ghost of Bernie Sanders got in there and erased erase the word fewer. I think that's what happened. Okay. Well, let's that's talk about that. That's why we invest in real estate, right, Matt? So we can pay fewer taxes. Well, that's well, that's, that's the one of the biggest advantages of real estate, right? right. One of the bigger ones, for right. sure. And let's talk about it. Because as I actually read that out loud, um, create jobs. You're like, screw this guy. <laughs> no. I'm thinking like, <laughs> it's such a positive spin on capitalism. Or is it actually what capitalism is, right? Um, contribute to the economy and uplift their families and local communities, create a better world. That's certainly not the view that capitalists have or the, the opinions people have of capitalists these days, is it? I'm always surprised when people have that opinion, though, that, that, it's, that it's anything but that. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think the stereotypical crazy millennial, um, which I am one, by the way, mm -hmm. um, so I can say that. They have the, the, my disclaimer they have, when I talk about realtors all the time. I say, but I was <laughs> one. Well, I, I think people have, they, they correlate capitalism with greed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I like to throw back to them and say, you know, what, what system is not correlated with greed? Uh, I mean, capitalism is simply the system through which we exercise freedom. That's all. Mm -hmm. That is all it is. Capitalism is the system through which you are enabled, enabled to be personally responsible. And you can do whatever you would like with that. And you have no room or judgment to be able to determine what somebody else wants within that system. Mm -hmm. So I'm always surprised when people are, when I, when I kind of hear the stereotypical rise against capitalism, um, but I, I find it to be kind of a silly debate that they come from. So, I mean, the world when left uninterrupted creates jobs, creates opportunities and creates a rising tide. That is just how the world operates. It's how it works. And mm -hmm. capitalism is the system through which we, we practice that. So we could call it a positive spin. I just call it reality. I agree. I, about five, six years ago, I recorded a YouTube video that, that painted a capitalist in this type of fashion because uh, I didn't recognize like where the negativity was actually coming from. I mean, you have to create the job, right? You have to solve society's problems. And, and when we create jobs, it contributes to the economy and it helps you provide for your family. I mean, how, where's the negativity in that? I don't quite follow it. Where I think that people have negativity is when we're, they perceive to be force gets thrown into the equation. So mm -hmm. if, we, if, we have, if we have an entrepreneur who is a, what we call a political entrepreneur, meaning that their business is built by getting government contracts and getting legislation passed. Mm -hmm. That's force. That is not freedom. And as long as we are doing things under the guise of freedom, then it's very, very difficult for us to hurt one another. Whereas if we are doing it through force, it's very hard for us to serve one another. So when, when we turn this around on somebody who is stereotypically anti-capitalist, I have a hard time finding where we actually disagree. But then we have to play some mental jujitsu in order to get them to see that the very thing that they decry as the enemy is actually their best friend. Yeah, I was gonna, 
I'm not going to sit here and say me too the whole interview, but I concur. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Ryan, the last time we spoke, you were in, in the midst of, of building a, a really successful Amazon business that mm. was uh, mm. definitely on the rise. And mm. since through hearing you in various interviews, uh, you're making, you're making your rounds. I'm, I'm seeing you all over the place now. You had a, a really good sized exit that then, uh, I don't know, just kind of bring you up to speed. What, what has happened? Sure. So I started uh, a physical, I, I've been an entrepreneur for 13 years. I started when I was 18 in my college dorm room and I had a skill set that I applied specifically to internet physical products brands from the years of 2013 to 2018. Mm -hmm. And in 2013, I kind of took my first order. I used amazon.com because Amazon does all the fulfillment, all the shipping, all those customer service, all that stuff. So I just get to just be a good marketer. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I, I, I built and scaled a few businesses. I had a few acquisitions uh, totaling just north of uh, $10 million. Um, I still hold stakes in, in those businesses. So if those businesses grow, depending on what the new owners do, that will determine how much of a you know, final payout I get. So we could talk about valuations and all this stuff, but the truth is, you know, it was uh, just over $10 million and mm -hmm. received. And I've been investing that money since. And with part of that investment, I've been building up the infrastructure of capitalism.com simply because I believe that entrepreneurs are the solution to all the world's problems and the greatest contribution that I can have is in the actual individuals who are making change, who are initiating that change, who are building businesses. And so my mission has been investing into those entrepreneurs, both monetarily and through content, which is uh, why you've been seeing me everywhere, is because I have been much more aggressive in my content distribution strategies since that mm -hmm. exit. Got it. Um, you might've said this and I might've, and I might've missed it. You, you got the, you'd started with Amazon dot com as far as your distribution and your fulfillment right did it end that way so we were in about a thousand retail stores in that business specifically okay and we took orders on our own website but amazon.com is still the centerpiece of that business and and i'm starting to business for like right now i'm um i'm uh i'm a partner in a food company that i'm really really excited about it's uh the company's called flex uh, i'm i'm just stoked with it mm -hmm. and our central distribution strategy is shopify and amazon so no matter what the, what the business is, if something is selling physical stuff, Amazon is a very important piece of, of that business. That is just mm -hmm. modern day marketing. I think I often get mislabeled as a quote Amazon guy, but I'm really just an entrepreneur who is using modern day marketing and distribution. Sure. And if you're selling anything physical, you better at least understand amazon.com as a distribution play. Right. Just like um, if you're putting content on the internet, uh, you better understand things like search engine optimization. Um, mm -hmm. uh, ju just like if you are a real estate investor, you better understand wholesaling or short sales or whatever your lane is. Right. So my lane in the physical products world has to have an arm of uh, amazon.com. Otherwise, I'm going to be playing from behind. Right, right. You know, this is a very timely question now. My wife, she's a member of an entrepreneurial organization, and she's in there with a lot of successful entrepreneurs. You have to show your show your stats to get in, mm -hmm. and uh, she's in there with several very successful Amazon people. Mm -hmm. And just this last weekend, when she had her meeting, um, they uh, one of the guys was he uh, Amazon had closed him down. He got too big, too successful. Is, is that a recurring pattern? Was that a, a or did he actually do something? Didn't tell her the whole story, or have you heard of that? So there's no such thing as you got too big. That, that, that's, that's not a real thing. Um, I thought it sounded like a one-sided opinion, but I wasn't sure what was going on. I don't know enough about it. Could a competitor have reported him? Sure. Mm -hmm. Could he have broken the rules? Sure. Could mm -hmm. something have thrown up a flag at Amazon? Sure. Could it be a combination of all these things? Probably. So it could be any number of things. Yeah. Um, that is just an, you know what's funny, Matt, is I think we all have this idea that there are no problems in everyone else's business. Like mm -hmm. real estate investors want to be entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs want to be real estate investors. Amazon sellers want to be info sellers. Info sellers want to be you know, coaches. You know, we, all, mm -hmm. we all see the glory in everybody else's businesses. But the truth is there is stuff that sucks in every business, every job, every life, no matter what. Yep. And you can either get really, really good at your, at your industry 
or you can complain about the challenges that exist. And um, we just knew that Amazon slaps or challenges is going to be part of, of the uh, process. Mm -hmm. And so we just went all in in that world and owned all of the, the things that could possibly go wrong. Right, right. All right, let's get back to the, to the program as it was designed. <laughs> as, you know, speaking of you getting your content all over the place because you are very visible right now, um, and you had a recent uh, get-together with Mr. Gary V. Mm -hmm. And I noticed you speak on that experience in, in, in multiple platforms. And so it seems like it had a big impact on you. What would you say was your biggest takeaway from that experience? So I've, I've met with Gary several times over the years mm -hmm. and I, I originally started following Gary Vaynerchuk because I saw him say that he wanted to own the New York Jets more than 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. My personal goal is to own the Cleveland Indians. So this guy's 10 years older than me, 10 years ahead of me. And so I started following him kind of um, having him contextualize the process 10 mm -hmm. years ahead of me. So I, I've learned a lot from Gary, not just from kind of his content, but just watching how he does business. And it's interesting, Matt, I'd say that the thing that I have, I learned on this meeting with Gary was not anything he said, but watching the actual organization of VaynerMedia. For example, mm -hmm. I went up there most recently when he was in the middle of the launch for Empathy Wines. Empathy Wines is one of his projects that, right. you know, wine companies have huge valuations if they're done well. So I'm really interested to see how they roll this out. And watching how he stays both involved, but also trusts his team to be able to do what they're doing was really interesting to me. And how he structures having multiple projects at the same time without him being in the weeds on all of them was really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of things going on and I'm the bottleneck in all of them. And mm -hmm. so it was really interesting to see someone who's 10 years ahead of me having even more projects as, as, as I do, but not in the, but he's not stressed about them like I am. What is he doing differently? And I just saw kind of the, first of all, what it takes in terms of infrastructure and also just the organization that he's built to be able to free him up to focus on those projects was, was my biggest takeaway for my, this yeah. visit with Gary. Mm -hmm. So what, what does business look like for you today then? And, and why was it that stuff so interesting? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, capitalism.com is my primary focus in terms okay. of content creation. And we do a, a yearly event called the capitalism conference. Mm -hmm. And we have a continuity program called the 1% that is about building businesses, investing the profits and creating wealth. And that my entire play is to build up an audience that is large enough to be a, an amplifier of whatever I desire to bring to the world, whether that is a brand or a business or a message. And at the same time, my strategy is to be putting myself in a person in a position to be in front of deal flow and opportunities and connections throughout the course of decades, not this year, not next year, not for the next three years, but for decades. Mm -hmm. And that's my long play. What that means practically is I have a, 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 a as you call it like a lab of physical products brands, because that's my background, which is called the capitalism initiative. Uh, there's a couple supplement companies in there. Uh, there's a paleo skincare company in there. And then I invest my profits into other businesses and other passive income streams. So I just invested in a company called Outstanding Foods, which is uh, similar to like a Beyond Meat startup. Um, I'm invested in this food company that I mentioned earlier, which is called Flex, which is a just add water protein based um, food company. Mm -hmm. So th that's th those are what my holdings look like. And so what seeing Gary in context did for me was see that I really needed to put more of an emphasis on empowering other people to be decision makers so that everything wasn't coming to me all of the time. And that would help me um, stay at the top of uh, stay at the top of the food chain without being overly stressed about every random decision. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd had, I mean, through, through the building of, of the, your business, um, the, this one that's uh that you've just had this exit on, you know, so, you had the, 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 the freedom fast lane podcast, I think. Yeah. yeah. So you had, you had a podcast, you had a social media presence, 
but now, I mean, definitely you're much more visible. And so it's obvious that you are directing some energy towards that, but it hasn't been that long. What, what has your experience been as far as becoming, I don't know, for lack of a better word, the, the influencer? I have to think about that because I don't think of myself as that at all. Right. Um, well, would you not consider yourself the, that being the correct label if the intent is to build an audience that then amplifies what you're up to? Sure. It's just, it's just what's interesting to me is the only thing that has changed mm-hmm. in the last five years is who has showed up. And by, and by this, I mean, you, know, it was a, you mentioned that I had a, a podcast called Freedom Fastlane. Mm-hmm. And I, now that is a time slot on capitalism.com, which mm-hmm. is my, my media company. And that was a very, dis, a, a very decisive direction change because I knew that if I kept talking about the same thing that I had talked about, I would be targeting the same people over and over again. Not that I have anything against them, but, be, but I had grown past it. Mm-hmm. And so the only thing that has really changed is my audience size is not any bigger than it was a few years ago. Mm-hmm. My, but my content output is a lot higher. So from the inside, I would experience a lot. I've experienced a lot of frustration. Right. But what has changed is I've changed and my message has changed and the type of people that are attracted to my message have changed. So there's a reason why you and I are having this conversation and you're an influential person and you're following my content um, because I've grown up and my message has matured a lot over the last few years. Whereas had I stayed doing what I had been doing, I might actually have a bigger audience, but I would be influencing less influential people. So the experience of, of becoming something is really just been the becoming more of myself mm-hmm. or the more mature version of myself. I've learned more and more over the last few years that all of this is an inside out game. Like everything, like everything that is wrong in your life is, is 80% your fault and 20 per, 20, 20% things outside your control. Uh, 20% of it is the economy. 20% of it is white privilege. 20% of it is, is uh, your parents. 20% and 80% of it is, is you. And if I'm frustrated with something, it's probably my fault. So it's just, it's just interesting to hear from the outside, you know, what has it been like to kind of rise as an influencer? Whereas the, 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 the way I, I answer that is it's in direct correlation with who I am and who I become over that same time period. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I speak to my audience and I, and I tell them like, every week we're talking about the, the new tactic, the new strategy mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. to make you more efficient and do better things and, and make more money. Um, and I always share that, that I can, I can teach you how to fill out a purchase agreement in 15 minutes or less, and you'll be the best purchase agreement filler out yep. everywhere <laughs> ever. But why you don't do it on a daily basis, that's going to come from within. Right. And so I'm always trying to tap into how, how do I, without getting too woo woo on people, how do we tap into that, internal drive and the thing that makes somebody develop that type of habit or the habit of just money making activities and do those consistently. What type of work are you doing on yourself internally? If any, I do a lot of therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, I am very consistent with journaling. Mm -hmm. I am very aware of my own thoughts and stories in my head. And it's interesting you bringing up it, I, I used to say I could sit by someone at their computer and show them how to start a business mm-hmm. for three days and they would call me a scam artist or I could hop on an hour call with the right person and tell them what to do. And they would tell me that I changed their lives. Um, <laughs> and the, the only difference there is the person, right? And, and I, I say sometimes the problem isn't, you sometimes the problem isn't your product sometimes the problem is just the people that you're targeting mm-hmm. with your product and i have relinquished my desire to try to change people for them to become the right people for my content or for my for my products or my businesses mm-hmm. that's their business uh that's their job it's it's my job to be very mentally healthy 
to be around people who keep stretching me and for me to keep moving forward and to let the chips fall where they're going to fall. Mm-hmm. And that's my work. That's my business. And I let other people's business be their business. And I think that allows you to have freedom to move forward towards what it is that you want. Mm-hmm. What is, what does journaling do for you? I've always been curious about huh. that. Uh, well, Matt, which page should we turn to here? In <laughs> so you've the been old, doing it for a while. Um, yeah. That looks like I, a, I, pro- I probably have a dozen. Of the last arc. I probably have a dozen of them. Okay. Um, well, I can tell you here, here's, Here's what I would share with you, Matt. The mm-hmm. first time, the first journal entry I ever, I ever had was back in 2012. Mm-hmm. And I was in a really, really dark spot coming out of a breakup, coming out of uh, some business failures, um, living alone in, in you know, a place where I didn't feel like I had any upside. Um, and so what I was really struggling with was finding purpose and finding and being purposeful. So what I ended up doing was pulling out my journal and writing down, okay, I'm struggling with purpose. Let's do something about this. The purpose of my life right now is, and I just made a decision. And I remember writing down is it's getting back in shape. It is shoring up income streams. It is building a friend group. It, and, and I just made a decision of what my focus was going to be for the next six months. Mm-hmm. And every opportunity, decision, or person that came into my life, I looked at my criteria on a piece of paper and I said, does this meet what is my purpose in life right now? And from, from then it evolved to sometimes I'm writing about goals. Sometimes I am, I like to write when I'm really clear minded because then when I'm not feeling so much that way, I can come back to when I was really clear And we all have times that we're like, we feel more like ourselves. Those are the times that we want to bottle and share with the guy or the girl who's not our best selves three months from now. And, and, and if we can carry some of that forward to, to help us through those times that are, are, are difficult, that is journaling to me. So I will write letters to myself from the past this is what I'm learning right now. Don't forget this lesson. This is what's important. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually read my journal more than I write in it. And I come mm-hmm. back to like my best self has a lot of notes in here and things that he is discovering. And those are the things that I want to carry with me forward. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. That's why I had you on the show. I, I like <laughs> how, you, how you respond to questions. Oh, thanks, Matt. Appreciate yeah, you it. bet. Um, what is something... Uh, few people know about you that you wish more people did. We're going to open up a whole can of worms here, Matt. <laughs> so uh, I don't think, um, so one, I, I love talking politics mm-hmm. and you know, there's two, there's two topics that you should never talk about with people and they are mm-hmm. politics yeah. and religion. Yeah. That's what people say. Um, I knew those were both. <laughs> <laughs> Well, politics is my number one favorite thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. And my second is religion. So I went to college thinking I was going to be a pastor, Mm -hmm. um, concluded that I didn't believe the faith that I had been, been grown up in Mm -hmm. and I walked away from it. And, um, I have had my own spiritual journey that is, is, it's funny. It's, if there's ever a movie about my life, there will be, uh, which is, by the way, the most egocentric thing I've ever said in my life. If there's ever a movie made about my life, uh, there will be, th- there will be the, the front story of the journey of the entrepreneur and the underlying or overlying journey of the, of the, the spiritual quest. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I wish most, more people knew about it was, was that story, uh, which is uh, something that I'm sure someday uh, I'll put out there and there will be more discussion around that but th- that that's probably the one thing that I, I wish more people knew got it nice who would play you in the movie i mean can i play me um <laughs> <laughs> is it is is that allowed well, this is a this would be a, if it were a, a posthumous thing is that the right uh, word th- oh well if, hold on a second if that's the case then i gotta pick an actor who's really young because well I, wait a minute okay you're just too young to play yourself at, at your age right now Oh, well, okay. Well, Ryan Gosling's older than me, but I'm still going to go with Ryan Gosling. I like it. I like it. Okay. Um, great. So 
Wow, we might have just answered my next two questions with that one answer, but I'm gonna ask you this anyway. What Please. commonly held truth, and maybe there's more, but let's pick one. What commonly held truth do you disagree with? Money buys you freedom. Mm, okay. Explain. Can you elaborate? Yeah. <laughs> so money expands the menu of options, mm-hmm. but options are not freedom. Um, and I had, and, and I, I have changed my tune on this, which is why I know it's a commonly held belief. Yeah. There's those two are synonymous for me. Yeah. Money and freedom. No options and freedom. Oh, I see. Yeah. But you're not really free until you make a choice. Mm-hmm. So like more options does not mean more freedom. And, and I, I think the paradox of choice is, is very true in the sense that as the menu of options expands, we feel more paralyzed. We're not, it's kind of like if, if you have a room in your house that you really don't like, and so you clear out all the furniture, and you're like, let's get rid of this junk. And you put it on Craigslist and you sell it all. And now you got this empty room. You now have the freedom. You have unlimited options to be able to put whatever you want in that room. But until you make a choice, it's a really boring room. And, and if you are in that room paralyzed by choice before you enjoy anything that's put in there, you are not free, man. So I think a lot of people, specifically freedom motivated people, like to keep their options open. But as a result, they never really move forward because it's, it's decisions that give us freedom. Money allows us to make different decisions, but freedom is not really experienced until we make decisions in alignment with what it is that we want. And I think we sometimes use money as a distraction from finding out what we really want. I, uh, I really have been humbled to when I discovered how little I and most people need in order to live lives where they're happy because happiness is kind of a choice too. So I no longer believe the idea that money is equal to freedom because I think that freedom comes on the other side of making choices and being present in those choices. And if you want to make a different choice, making a different choice but I think it's more of a practice than uh, a re- uh, something that money requires. Interesting. You're welcome to push against me if you'd like. Again. Yeah, no, I just, I mean, you can certainly say options, like if, if you're paralyzed by choice, then yeah, that's not freedom. But if you have the option of what you want to do today and you don't have to do anything, mm-hmm. to me, that's freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but in what scenario do you have to do anything? Right. I mean, we can speak spiritually and metaphysically, and I think you're acting. I I mean, I mean, practice. I mean, I know, I know people believe that they have to go to work. Mm -hmm. Right. No, they don't. This is every day you wake up and you go to work, Mm -hmm. and you can hem and haw and resent your boss and do kinds of things. No one is making you get in the car and go to work but I have to pay the bills. Do you? Do you have to pay them or can you change them? Mm-hmm. Oh, but, but I have to keep my house. Do you? These are all choices. Right. And so, so I think we, we are often tra- trapped by our own choices mm-hmm. and we want the freedom from the previous choices that we have made. That's, that's what people really mean when they usually say freedom. I want to be free of the stress that I caused by my previous choices. Mm-hmm. That's what most people consider to be free. I wish I could not have the stress that came with the life that I've created up until this point. Mm-hmm. But the truth is you can always make different choices. You, know, uh, you asked about Gary earlier. Um, I, when I first met Gary Vaynerchuk, I was on stage at the Capitalism Conference in 2015, I think. And I asked him about his relationship with risk because he legitimately just puts it all on the line all the time. And I said, do you ever fear losing it all? And he says, not only do I not 
fear losing it all. I secretly want it to happen. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are you talking about? He said, I love the idea of being in some small queen's apartment with cockroaches in it. And I look at the cockroach. I'm like, you and me cockroach, we're going to take over the world. He's like, I live for that. That's freedom to me. And a few years later, when I was having dinner with him, he was telling me about a business he had just acquired and how he had taken the team from 50 to a hundred people. And I was like, Gary, how do you feel comfortable going from 50 employees to a hundred employees on a business that you just bought? You're dr- driving down the profit margin real fast. And he said, Ryan, my only fixed expense is rent. Mm-hmm. And so it was, it was then that I, I kind of had the internal shift of he is genuinely free by putting it all on the line. He is genuinely playing a game to him. And I think we buy into this, uh, this misunderstanding that you one day get to a level where you are supposedly free Mm-hmm. But the truth is we are, we are choosing it over and over and over again with the decisions that we make on a daily basis. So that's my long way of saying why I don't believe that money equals freedom. Mm-hmm. What I just shared with you on, on my position, but I've also shared with you what you just said before, so I can see how I've contradicted myself in the past when mm-hmm. you really lay it all out there. Um, who's the ideal person you're looking for right now inside of your business? Yeah, so um, I used to think that it was my job to win people to my side of the argument mm-hmm. or my side of uh, a political debate or my, my telling people why they should be entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. I no longer believe that. Uh, I no longer take that responsibility. I now, if you give me the guy or the girl that had lemonade stands and shovel dries when they were kids because that was more fun than all the other stuff that their friends were doing, Mm -hmm. that's the person that I could give a formula to and have them have a really successful business very quickly. Uh, There's, there's a a common character trait among the people who are really successful in my community. And it's that ever since they were kids, they wanted to be entrepreneurs or they wanted to be successful. They knew they were different and they come to me because I give them the how to Um, I'm their how to guy. I'm their, their, practical implementation guy. Um, and then, but I know secretly that at the end of the day, what we're all seeking is some sort of um, enjoyment and well being, And so I kind of speak to that on the side so that, that my ideal person is the, is the guy or girl that always knew deep down that they had entrepreneurial tendencies and they just haven't seen their path yet. Mm-hmm. I give them the path. So that person, what is the best way for them to reach out to you? So my podcast, Mm -hmm. I have a series of podcasts at Mm capitalism.com. The one that I'm probably best known for is called The 1%. Mm -hmm. It's about building businesses, investing the profits, and creating the life that makes an impact. Mm -hmm. And uh, my Instagram is at Ryan Daniel Moran. And contrary to popular belief, I actually do read my DMs. I don't always get back to them, especially the, we call them assholes. Uh, people who just ask, <laughs> ask for more and more and more and more. Uh, but I, I genuinely do do read them. That's my Instagram handle. Very good. Yeah, I just discovered that there's a separate little inbox in DM. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I got a lot of DMs. I was like, why doesn't yeah. anybody ever DM me? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know they were all over in this one little section. Matt, are you a father? I am, yes. Yeah, do, do, are your kids laughing at you when you check out that Instagram? Yes, yeah, sort of. well, he's only seven. So still, yeah, but he does run circles like, around. Yeah, you didn't know there was another inbox. I know, right? <laughs> but it's, that's highlighted. It's like in a font or a color that you can barely see behind the white background. <laughs> At least with my old eyes. Uh, Ryan, it's, it's been a though. pleasure. Um, congrats to you on all the success. And I wish you all the best um, in the future. I think you're one, you're one of the great ones out there, dude. And I think greatness Thanks, is man. for you just Thanks, to man. get bigger and bigger for you. I've watched your rise over the last couple of years. I really appreciate you bringing me on every couple of years or so. So mm-hmm. thanks, man. I'm rooting, I'm rooting for you as well. Super. Thanks. Let's not wait two years next time, three years. You know how to find me. <laughs> Perfect, buddy. And likewise. All righty. So God bless to your success. I'm Matt Terry. I'll see you next week on another episode of Thought Leader Thursday. All righty. On the Ethical Real Estate Investing Show. Take care.